Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 12 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the design and construction of the fascia for the front dash. This is a, a key part as it's the unit within which all of the instruments, all of the key instruments will be mounted. And this video will also look at some of the challenges that had to be overcome in making this. Let's buckle up. The front dash frame that I've made is based on the free online A10C plans released by Dimebug. We can see on screen now the instructions that came with that design and as we start to scroll through that we can see the earlier parts of the frame that we've made so far and the order in which they're assembled together. And what that brings us to is what we see on screen now. And this is a point I've previously built the frame to. So we'll just have a look now at a video of that as it was completed. Part three in this video series talks through and looks closely at the various modifications I made to it to make it work for my particular Simpit. They're great plans and for anyone looking to build a Simpit and a, and a front dash for that, definitely worth a look. What we're now looking to do is take it from this point here and add to it the main fascia within which all the instruments will be mounted and then also there'll be a top piece just to enclose it. My starting point is to look at the plans that Dimebug put together for his fascia and we'll bring that up on screen now and take from that the height, the width and the shape as my starting point as just an outline for me to then to take my design plans of all of the instruments and put those into that outline and get all the alignment correct and check that they all fit. What we can see on screen here is a blank outline of the initial shape of the fascia which I have placed that onto the 3D image of the front dash frame built so far. At the start of the video I mentioned that there were several challenges that needed to be overcome to make this fascia and the first was which software to use. The problem being that the individual instruments I've designed I did so in Cut2D by Vectric but there's a limitation on that software if you've got the desktop version that you can only draw something 600 millimeter by 600 millimeter so those dimensions the dimensions of this outline we see here are beyond what can be done in that software and the cost for the upgrade to the pro edition it's just something that well it's something that couldn't be done for this project so it was a question of how can i design it within which software so what I've done, I've designed it within Fusion 360 and I've then taken each of my instruments as designed in the Vectric Cut 2D software, exported it as a DXF file, which I've then imported one at a time into Fusion 360 to start populating the outline of the frame and then get all the alignment correct. So in Fusion 360, I start by creating the fascia which is Dimebug's plans this is the outline of his initial measurements and then I can then place into that my own designs which are exported from Cut2D so I've got the angle of attack indicator digital clock armament panel landing gear panel nav panel RWR and then we've got three key instruments here altimeter airspeed indicator and vertical velocity indicator 
UHF repeater, backup attitude indicator, CMSC, MFCDs, HSI, ADI, fuel panel, indicators, EMI. And if we just take a glance at that now, that's the bulk of everything in there. Some of the other things to be thinking about see glare shield. Let's just have a bit of a look at that. So some of this is just for reference. So this is just my initial design of the glare shield and the fire handles and where they'll sort of be placed, where the mounting holes would be. And then at this point, with all of the instruments placed within the outline and aligned relative to one another, I can start thinking about how this will sit against the original frame and then to draw into it things like the top shelf that will go into place, the existing shelf within the current frame, the wooden sides outer, wooden inner sides, etc. So I get to build up a picture of how it will be mounted into and sit against the current frame. So at this point I've got something down that might potentially work but before trying to produce this, I initially start by taking this design and printing it onto paper to then cut out and stick to cardboard, which can give me an idea of how it would marry up to the physical frame I've already built. In running this exercise, I was really quite surprised by just how much waste material there is and what you're actually left with. We now encounter the second main challenge, which is it's very evident now that because this isn't going to be a glass cockpit and there will be instruments mounted into these cutouts, the remaining material will not give the strength to support them. Also, in taking a prototype fire handle I've made, I can see that its placement within the glare shield is just too low down. And even if it's of a much smaller depth, it would still obstruct the eye line of the main instruments. So I revisit the design to look to address these. So in revisiting the original design, the first thing I look to do is slightly alter the shape of the top left and right outer edges. This allows me to move some of the instruments to the left and right, which creates a greater amount of width of the supporting material, and also to move the glare shield which was obstructing the eye line out of the way for now, which lets me move instruments uh, vertically also, increasing the thickness from that point of view. We can now see on screen the revised plan that will give it that greater strength. Another thought is to take the increased width of supporting material, which is now thick enough to let an M3 screw pass through it to hold in place some metal threaded rods that would be bolted to the back to give the whole frame extra strength. Here's a glance at the original design as a template compared to the revised one which gives the greater thickness and strength needed. So the 3D image we see now is the design that we're going to go with and what we're going to make. The machining of this will be done at my father-in-law's who has a CNC machine and allows me to make use of that for this project. Now the third challenge is that the fascia in millimetres is roughly 939 by 433 but the machinable area of this CNC is 610 by 365. The solution is to produce a fascia in two separate parts that will then be stuck together with a very strong wood adhesive. 
Each of the two parts done will be done on one piece of material but in two separate tile toolpaths within the CAM software. So what we can see now is what will be the top half of the fascia and that itself is produced as two tiles. When the first tile on the left is done we then use dowels to move the sheet of wood to machine the tile on the right. As can be seen here there's a little bit of trial and error getting familiar with how to shimmy it along properly so it all lines up. By the time we move on to the second half of the fascia it's pretty much plain sailing. The point at which the upper and lower halves of the fascia will be attached together will be it will form a line that snakes around the various cutouts of the instrument so there's no weakness where it passes through what would be a cutout itself of an instrument. Unlike the left console that I made which use MDF and it's mostly MDF used as a type of wood for most parts of the simpit, we've used here plywood to give greater strength. So we're now about to move on to the second tile of what is the bottom of the fascia. So being able to take the sides off the CNC machine in line with the x-axis where the material can be fed through and using the tile tool pass has effectively allowed um, two pieces of material to be used for the fascia rather than what would have otherwise been four parts given the machinable area. And with the two halves complete we can now look to join them together into one solid unit. So as can be seen the join between the two pieces of wood snakes in between the instruments as opposed to going through any of them. At this point we have the main fascia completed as one unit. But we now need to be thinking about the raised profile needed in the midsection which has been put together using plywood again. This has been machined in two parts as well as layers because the protrusion extends up to about 35mm so it's far easier to produce it as two cutouts on the CNC machine and then put them into one. The extent of protrusion chosen for the different instruments is very closely linked to what's in Dimebug's plans uh, as well as looking at pictures online of A10C cockpits. We'll now put the two pieces together to see what the raised profile will look like and then we can see it positioned on the main fascia. What lies beyond us at this point now is to take time to sand and prepare these materials to prime and paint them. I sanded and primed the main fascia a good number of times just to try and give it the right finish that I was after. So if we take a minute now to look at the finish of the main front and then we'll flip it over to have a look at the rear. So I'm pleased with the finish and it was definitely worth the, the patience needed with all the priming and painting. Before completing the raised profile section I turn my attention first of all to the original frame as built previously. A few modifications are needed to this for the new fascia to attach to it. So we'll just take a closer look at the unit and then we can look at some of the small modifications made. The first thing is that the landing gear panel and the fuel panel which sit on the outermost left and right sides need a indentation cutting into the shelf that was there originally for the components to be able to sit in them as we can see now. So I've cut these out based on the maximum size of the components I'm likely to use and then just tidied up and repainted. There's a number of holes I've drilled in place at the back of the original frame and this is where the threaded rods will go through and be bolted in place. Finally, at the front left and right outer sides, you can see brass inserts 
to mount the fascia onto it, which we, we can see here. And the effect is exactly as I was hoping it would be. Really pleased with the look. And I love the two colour tones between the grey and the black of both the left console and this front dash. We spoke previously about using threaded rods, which we can see before us now, to give even greater strength to that fascia. So I'd like to give a shout out to my father-in-law, Phil. Thanks for your suggestion of using these threaded rods. It definitely, without any doubt, has significantly more strength. Also, very much appreciate your time you spent on your lathe to machine the ends of these threaded rods to put the thread internally within them, which we can just have a closer look at now. And that allows the M3 screw to hold them in place at the rear of the fascia. Of course, Phil, when this project's completed, we will have to make sure that we build you a sim pit as well, so we can fly multiplayer. And if we just take a moment now to have a look at the fascia, fully secured and in place. And just for nice effect at the back, just put some dome nuts on. I did find that for the centre profile, I really wasn't happy with the finish of that one. Unlike the main fascia, which what you catch is mostly the finish, this very much catches the inside cut through the wood. And given that it's plywood as opposed to MDF, the lines are just really pronounced, and this is despite lots of sanding and priming over and over. Now there's a number of approaches I could have taken to remedy this. What I went with ultimately was to use an aluminium sheet, just 0.5 of a millimetre thick, and to make cutouts from it that will fit onto the sides of that front dash profile. Not all of the lines of the plywood need to be completely hidden at this point because most of them, when the instruments are mounted into the front dash, what sits behind them will not be seen. This is about taking the remaining areas of the front dash and the raised profile that the eye is always going to catch and just making sure they're more presentable. So at this point you can see where I've uh, sprayed them and primed them and prepared those to put in place. And let's take a look at those as they're now added to the raised profile. So this does a good job of hiding the lines that would have been visible to the eye upon completion of the sim pit. What's left to do now is to take a file and to blend all the edges into the wooden piece and then to give it another coat of paint so it all blends as the same grey. We now take a look at this after I've filed it and repainted it. And let's have a look at specifically the side angle there. And we can see that to the eye, when the sim pit's finished, the look will be well much better than it was before. All of the other internal bits, the other bits of wood you can see inside of the cutouts, ultimately they'll be hidden when the instruments are in place. Now let's just take a moment to have a closer look at a before and an after. And I think this was definitely worth the extra time needed just to ensure the finish was right. So it's definitely starting to come along now. It's definitely worth the extra time needed to produce this. Uh, midsection that protrudes outwards to give everything the right depth and look, keep the sim pit in keeping with the real A10C cockpit. Here we are at the point where the front dash, in terms of the whole physical frame, is now completed. Again, these are based on the free A10C plans released very kindly by Dynebug. 
If you have a look back a little bit earlier in this series of videos that I've done, you'll see there's one where I show those plans and where I've accessed them through the forums, and then another one where I've detailed the use of those and any modifications I've made along the way so it'll work for my particular simpit. It's took her a fair amount of time to reach this stage, not just because of physically building the frame, but each of the cutouts you see is pre-designed in size and dimensions to accommodate the instruments that I now, now go on to build. And now comes a really exciting part, which is to build all these instruments, to implement them into the frame and to bring them online. For those on this journey with me, I hope to share that with you soon. Thanks for watching.